homes of people who hate the outside world. Hey guys, it's Ben from All Things Human, and I'm today's guest host on Taltanic. But more on that later. For now, let's get on with the video. You might have thought that you were an introvert because you didn't like hanging out with other people, but you really have nothing on the people who own these isolated buildings. These are the homes of people who hate the outside world. Number 14, Home Sweet Home. If you find yourself traveling to a tiny little French island called Ile de Saint Cadeau, then you might just happen upon the quaint little house you see in this picture. You will almost certainly find this small but enchanting home because, well, it's the only one on the entire island. Although this house is extremely close to the edge of the water, we still don't know whether or not the sea level rises to the exact spot. At least, high enough to swamp this humble abode, we still relish in the thought of staying here for the night, or maybe even the month. There's something uniquely beautiful about the serenity of complete isolation. Well, isolation in the midst of nature, not like isolation found in a tiny padded room while in a straitjacket. That kind of isolation is supposed to make you crazy. Number 13, the rice farmer's hut. If this is the house we get to live in when we're working on the rice fields of Vietnam, then sign us up to become a citizen and a laborer this second. While we don't like doing incredibly hard labor or sharing this tiny hut with other farmers working the land, the majestic rice fields surrounding the lonely hut accompany it in a way that would be very peaceful if you were left alone. The rice fields you see here are located in Mu Kang Chai and it looks like a sight we could stare at all day. With views like the one you see here, it's easy to see why tending the rice fields is a family tradition passed down from generation to generation. We wouldn't want to leave this bountiful paradise either if our families already lived there. You can't get a site like this, but in a few places in the world, and certainly not in the United States. Number 12, the Red House. The red-hued home pictured here is striking against the stunning landscape behind it. The sky is a perfect blue and the clouds are fluffy and white. There's obviously no one else around and that is an introvert's favorite dream. With these buildings being in such remote locations, it's a wonder how they get supplies out to them. We thought we had it bad lugging heavy groceries up a couple flights of stairs. Number 11, the coldest home. When you become really sick of people, so much so you don't even want to be on the same continent as anyone else, then you need to take an excursion that leads you to what is perhaps the most isolated residence in the world, located on Winter Island, Antarctica. <laughs> isn't that quite a name, is the home you see in this picture, the Wordy House. This station was originally made by the British as an early scientific base off the west coast of the Great Frozen Wasteland. This building was fashioned from pieces salvaged from an abandoned whaling station back in the late 1940s. It can house between four and five explorers, and it is composed of six different rooms. Included in the Wordy House is a kitchen, living room with sleeping quarters, an office, a dog room, yes, for the sled dogs, a generator hut, and very important, and almost equally as important, only toilet facilities for miles around. And you thought it was cold when you went to the bathroom in the morning. Try answering the call of nature in negative degree weather. Number 10, the moon hole home. Yes please to the creative residents in this image. We'd move there in a heartbeat if we could. If we were trapped on a tropical island for a few years, we would like to believe that we would have been able to create some sort of masterpiece that looks like the home you see here. This house is called Moon Hole, and it's located in Bakia Grenadine. Supposedly, using the home in the forefront as a sort of anchor, the home in the back was created out of whale bones, local wood, and other miscellaneous objects that were salvaged from the ocean. Each piece then lended a helping hand in completing the creation you see today. We might be okay with being stranded on an island if we had a house like this. And we had plenty of food and fresh water. Internet's so overrated anyway. Number 9. The Solvay Hut. If height is not an issue for you, and you prefer to sit on the clouds, looking down at the world below your feet, 
then you need to trek on over to Zermatt, Switzerland, where the spectacular view you see here is the same view you get every morning with your daily coffee. This small yet sturdy mountain hut is the highest building in the entire region, sitting at over 13,000 feet above sea level. It was built back in 1915, so it has that beautiful old architecture charm. And if you manage to make it through the northeastern ridge of the Matterhorn, you and nine other friends will have somewhere to rest your head since the mountain lodge houses 10 at a time. Although, we are sure that if you bring one more person, there wouldn't be any reason they couldn't sleep on the floor. Heck, for a view like this, we would sleep just about anywhere. Number 8. The House on Elliday Island. There is a house located on an island in Iceland, and it is known all around the world. When the home was first built, it was built by a group of puffin hunters that needed some place to stay the night before they went out on the hunt the next day. As you can see in this picture, this small home is sitting in the middle of what seems like a very protective island. Some people confuse this island home with the home of Bjork, whose name sounds similar, but is actually located much further west than this one. This lodge-like home certainly worked well back in the day as a temporary hunting lodge, but this home probably needs some updates before it's inhabitable again. Number seven, the house on a mountain. We aren't sure if there are any volcanoes in the surrounding area that could affect the residents living in the tiny community pictured here, but we're going to assume that there are not. Since there isn't something that could potentially wipe everything away in a matter of hours, we can say that this is one beautiful spot to live. The grass depicted here is so green, it looks like these people could plant whatever their heart desires. Since there's so much room to live and grow, this seems like one of the best spots in the world to live. These are views you wouldn't see anywhere else on the planet. The great thing about living in the middle of nowhere is that you don't have to share the beautiful scenery with anybody else. And they won't try to build a corporation or strip malls, desecrating the world around them. Number six, a secluded monastery. Eremo de San Colombano is the monastery pictured here and is located in Trembileno, Rovatero, Italy. This religious building was designed and created back in the 8th century. You can tell by this image that it is quite an extraordinary establishment. We want to know how these people managed to create this building wedged inside of a cliff. You wouldn't want to carry grocers up these stairs either, since there's 102 stone steps to reach the top. Just forget about going back for that second trip entirely. That's just too many stairs to climb twice. Could you imagine moving all of your stuff up there? Number five, the monastery on Kachi Pillar. You can't go up and worship or stay in the monastery located in Chiatara, Georgia. You can't go up and worship or stay in the monastery located in Chitara, Georgia, unless you aren't afraid of heights, even in the least bit. As this image shows, the monastery we're talking about sits far above the ground floor. This building was hoisted up into the sky on top of a gigantic natural limestone monolith, giving the person who lives here a one-of-a-kind zip code. If you do get to this remote location, there's an ancient wine cellar that might possibly still contain an old bottle or two. Just to be sure, if you find alcohol up there and you do drink, stay far away from the edges so that you don't accidentally fall off or tumble. It's not like there's a hospital nearby to save the day. If you get hurt out here, you're pretty much screwed. Number four, a lost residence. Although it looks like the massive home in this picture has long since been abandoned, we would really love to see what it looked like when it was first built. It might appear to be falling into shambles, but there really isn't anything a good bit of restoration couldn't fix. This is another home that has a breathtaking backdrop that would make any neighbor green with envy. The manor pictured here is no doubt one of the best places in the world to watch the rain. Number three, the invisible house. We call the home in this image the invisible house because of the way it blends into the landscape behind it. If you just glanced at this picture, you might just think that this is a bunch of tall rocks jutting out from the ground like miniature standalone mountains. Just imagine watching the sunrise and sunset in some of these gorgeous places. Capturing sights like that would be a photographer's wildest dream. 
Number two, the Wooded Island House. As this picture shows, you can only access this $10 million remote island by boat or plane. That being the case, this seems like a great place to call home for people who just don't want any sort of connection with the outside world. The great thing about the island pictured here is that it is covered in trees, which means you not only get a ton of privacy, but you could also thin the herd a little if you ever needed wood to build things like a house. This would also be one of the best spots to hide if there were ever zombies, as long as you could get enough food. Number one, the lighthouse. Located on Bishop Rock Island in Great Britain sits the lighthouse pictured here. The Guinness Book of World Records listed this island as the smallest island that had a building on it quite a few years back. This island is in the Isle of Scilly, 28 miles off the coast of Cornwall. The lighthouse and residence that sits there was first lit back in 1858, so it's been around for a while now. Although it looks large and impressive close up, in this picture, the view from far away shows just how secluded the lighthouse really is. If you liked that video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you liked me, maybe you could check out a video on all things human, right over here. Thanks, I'll see you later.